All right, so here's how Impromptu works. Okay. All right, so Impromptu is a, it's a game you can only play with thinkers, right? So it's a thinking game. Okay. Right, and what happens is I'm gonna throw out a random thought, right? And then we're gonna discuss it for five minutes. Okay. And then at the end of those five minutes, we have to stop no matter what. Gotcha. Right, and so you can only play with thinkers, okay. right? Because because only thinkers think thinking is fun, right? So gotcha. I'm gonna throw it out. <laughs> The five minutes doesn't start till you start talking. Oh, okay. Right? All right. So once you start talking, then our five minutes, and Mr. Nate will just tell us when it's time to stop. All right, we'll, bet. we'll do two. Right? Gotcha. That way we don't do a bunch. All right. So here's number two. Here, here's the first one. All, All right. right. I think, I think that there are different levels of knowledge, not just different amounts. And so what I think, for an example, is I think that moral teaching moral teachings are a higher level of knowledge than subject teaching, gotcha. right? And the reason I get that is because I say, Jesus came here and he could have taught anything whatsoever, but what he taught was morals, right? When he was teaching, he was always teaching morals. He could have taught physics, he could have taught astrology, he could have taught anything, right? But what he chose was to teach moral truths. Mm -hmm. And so I think, oh, if Jesus, who knew everything, could have taught anything, he teaches moral truths as he thinks is the highest truth. Mm -hmm. And the reason I think this is important, at least for me, is because I think that there's nowhere in our culture that we try to teach moral truths culturally, right? Uh, in, our, in our schools, we try to teach math, English, things like that. But what would happen if we said something like, let's talk about how math fits into truth, mm -hmm. right? So what we're actually teaching you is truth, but you learn math on your way to truth, right? Okay. Or what if we said, let's talk about how history fits into compassion, mm -hmm. right? So you're actually learning compassion, but you learn history on the way. Were people compassionate? How were they compassionate? What mm -hmm. were they not? That kind of thing, but you learn that on the way to compassion, right? Gotcha. So I think that those are higher levels of knowledge versus I think our culture tends to think of knowledge as only different amounts. Mm -hmm. You have a bunch of knowledge, I have less knowledge, that type of thing. Gotcha. So what do you, I guess, what do you think about that? So I'm hearing like quantitative versus quality, like the, okay, qual yeah, yeah. the quantity of that. knowledge versus the quality of uh, knowledge. So if okay. you take your math uh, knowledge, like I can teach addition and you can have almost an infinite amount of addition knowledge, uh -huh. but it, that's the amount of knowledge. But if I go beyond addition and I go to binary equations uh -huh. or I go to those, that's a higher level of knowledge. And right. so I think like even when it comes to like knowledge about the world and things of that nature, we understand certain things because for us, it kind of seems as a basic level mm -hmm. of knowledge. And, but yeah. as you start building on that, like you will see like, okay, this is a higher level of knowledge that I have to uh, ascertain because otherwise I don't know what's going on. Right. Um, and I think that's where, you know, Jesus, when he came, he was like, even to the point where he was saying, you can go to the sermons on the Mount when he was saying, oh, Moses said this uh -huh. basic level knowledge, right. but Ladies. here's even a higher level of knowledge. Right. And I think it's just one of those things where the higher level of knowledge is going to require more of you to kind of think about process, but also once you start living it and achieving it or achieving it and then living it, like it also be a lot more beneficial, not just for you, but for others. And also you can, it then it can multiply and be a little more quantitative, mm. or should I say? Quantitative, quantitative. and qualitative. Yeah, yeah, and I then it, right. it, it will also increase the quality. And so like, yeah. I think it's just one of those things where, you know, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I think for some of us, it might be, <laughs> we, we, I don't even think that I thought about knowledge in the say of saying like, there's, X amount of knowledge in a qu quantity wise. Uh -huh. I always think of uh, knowledge as, you know, how much of amount of, I guess that's his quality, a uh, quantity, how much knowledge do I have of a certain thing? Uh -huh. Which then I guess that will start raising the, the amount or the- We hope, right? But, right? but I actually don't know, right? And so for instance, the example that I've been using is my mother, mm -hmm. right? So my mother, I mean, probably reads more scriptures, listening to more sermons than but she retires, so she got nothing but time, right? <laughs> right? But, but what's interesting is my mother was not educated necessarily in theology, right? So mm -hmm. if you sit down with her and you'd be like, Ma, tell me about your eschatological view, and no, do you believe that justification and sanctification are linked, or do you think they're two separate things? She'd be like, I don't know what I don't you're know talking about, about yeah. right? But that's, so she doesn't have the volume of knowledge, but if you said to my mother, how do you trust God in hard times? Right. The knowledge she would give you 
I would argue is more important than the right. other knowledge, right? right. I, I, so, so we tend to think, and in fact, I was talking to a young Christian once. This was, this was helped me kind of bring this out of light because I was recognizing how we even think of spiritual maturity and growth, right? Mm -hmm. Is she came to me and she said to me, hey, um, I feel like I'm growing everywhere else in my life but at home. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, when I go home, I know that I need to forgive, but I'm not ready to. And I said, to me, that sounds like growth, mm -hmm. right? If you know that you need to do something, but you're not doing it yet, but you know you need to get there, you need to work harder at it. It um, presumes that you didn't once know that. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and presumes that you are trying to right. grow in that area, right? But, but she didn't see that as growth because at home, they're not teaching her about God, right? At home, she has to apply it. But like, see, also, I think that there's the, that binary type of thinking, like yeah. you're either doing it or you're not. They don't mm. have that like in between where it's like, am I growing into it? Mm. And so it's just one of those black or white types of ways we think about things. Yeah. And I think like, even if you look at Jesus, Jesus, a lot of times he came and he, he loved the gray area. He that's loves how I the gray he loved area. The gray area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's where a lot of us, if we can just get to understand like, hey, the gray area is not a bad area. And mm. also it's kind of a fallacy to think about a black and white type of way because a lot of times you think black and white and it will lead you down a road of being a Pharisee. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I think you're exactly And then right. that's where to the point of the young lady who is like growing in her knowledge of mm -hmm. needing to forgive. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may not have that knowledge at first or desire to, but mm -hmm. now you know that have, you have that knowledge and maybe you have the desire, but now as you're growing, it's no longer a binary way of thinking. You're trying to get to the point where you actually do well, it. And I think that's the higher level for me, right? And that's I what I'm saying. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's the higher level is everywhere you go, they might have been teaching you scriptures, giving you sermons and everything like that. But if you can't go home and take pot. that, right? Right. And use it to that, forget, then, then to me, you, you've, got a, you've got more knowledge, you've got right. different amounts of knowledge, but you didn't get the higher level of the knowledge, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think even Jesus even talked about there, was like, y'all know the scriptures and all these things, yeah. talking, especially to the Pharisees, the scribes, mm -hmm. and the things like mm -hmm. that. Y'all know the scriptures, but you guys- You missed not, the truth. Y'all missing the truth yeah. about it. And it's like, yeah. like, and all those scriptures was pointing back to me. Back me. And y'all don't even see that. Right now. Like right I'm now, standing I'm here, standing in right front of here. you and proclaiming it to you. Mm -hmm. However, you're so tied to what you heard, mm -hmm. And probably there's also some um, other reasons why they didn't want to see that, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, knowledge. Yeah. And so that even goes to the point of like saying, like you talk about that higher level of knowledge. Sometimes we want to reject that higher level of knowledge for personal reasons, mm. because then it frees us to, in ignorance, act a certain way. Mm. And so I think even... Oh, yeah. Well, I think, uh, and, I, and I'll try to slide this before Mr. Nate yells at us. He's, I'm, I'm sure he's about to in a second uh, with the five minutes, but, but uh, I'll try to slide this. I think... I think this is a key piece that could really help us as Christians, right? Mm -hmm. Because what I think happened is we lost track of what Jesus was trying to give us as the higher level of knowledge and began to settle into the lower. And what I mean is, um, or how I think about it is, right? Jesus promises some crazy things, mm -hmm. right? Joy, freedom, peace, beauty, right? But we tend to think that those things will manifest when our circumstances are right, right? right, And so instead of us finding joy anytime we want to, we wait. Yeah. Like, when I get a certain amount of money, I'll get my joy. Right. When I get a certain amount of house or my goal, get my joy. And Jesus was like, oh no, if you remember, I told you my joy, I give to you. You got it already, you got it. right? You can get it anytime. Right. But if we, as long as we live on the circumstance level, then we miss what was promised. But also to that point, sorry, Nate, no. um, yeah. to that point, um, we don't understand what joy is. We think mm. joy, joy and happiness are the same. Are synonymous. Yeah, and and it's just like joy, that isn't what it, that's not what it means. Mm -hmm. And so like, because we have that as our, what we're aiming for, we're going to always miss it because that's not what because the actual, that's, not, that's oh. not where it is. Oh, now you hit, because that's the other, all right, so. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, he did. He did. Let me he did. All right, we'll try. We'll try one more. All right, gotcha, all right. gotcha.